Hey everybody, welcome to Creative Bug. We're coming at you live like we always do on Thursday and I'm really excited because nice. we have an old friend here, Anna Joyce. It's been a while since we've seen you. It's been a couple years, we've moved locations mm -hmm. and so much has happened. Yep. Um, you did this amazing round of classes with us and now you have a new book out. It's so exciting. Oh my God, it's awesome. So you're coming from Portland, Anna Joyce is coming from Portland. Yep. And um, tell me about your new book. Uh, so my new book is called Hand Dyed. Uh, it's a modern guide to dyeing in brilliant color for you and your home. Um, I basically take you through how to dye with fiber reactive dye. Um, oh, mix your own colors. Amazing. Oh, thank you. This is hand dyed indigo linen. Um, this was actually used for the upholstery uh, project oh, yeah, that's yeah. in the book. Yeah, we have a, um, a big chair that's pretty fun. So I teach you how to use like the basics of using indigo and fiber reactive dye so mm -hmm. that you can dye stylish textiles for kind of anybody in your life. I love this. So cellulose, protein, synthetics. Mm -hmm. Teaching you the different fibers and how and which dyes to use with them. That's so, so cool. All the fun like folding, binding techniques. Exactly, and then I have this pattern library, which I really love. It basically gives you all of the different patterns that are kind of like the foundations of tie-dye and shibori, and then from that you can just kind of go and explore and iterate and um, make your, come up with your own patterns and experiment, exactly. Oh. Okay, gift wrap, that's like my favorite yes, thing Yes, we ever. even have gift wrap. That's just rice paper dyed with um, liquid watercolor. It's so really, great. this is a really fun project to do with kids. I really love it. Fun. Yeah. These are so beautiful. Thank you. And the book just came out. When did it come out? March 26th. March 26th. Yes. This is hot off the press. Hot off the press, yes. Um, and people can win a copy of the book. So comment and like in, uh, make sure you're following Anna Joyce on Facebook, following Creative Bug, and we'll pick a winner at the end of the week. Great. Well, I can't wait. Only a day or two left. Exciting. Um, yeah. Oh my God. So many beautiful things. And then what are we going to do today? It's a project from the book, right? Yeah, a, absolutely. A technique. A technique from the book. So we're going to do ice dye, which is really fun. It's one of my favorite techniques. Um, the uh, the fiber reactive dye is going to go on top of the ice, and as the ice melts, the t-shirt underneath records the pattern that the water makes as it melts oh, with the dye cool. into the fiber. It's like a timepiece. Exactly. It's very cool, and you end up with these really rich, kind of like otherworldly patterns. I love and, it. It's so very um, galaxy-like. Like this is one. Exactly. Uh, we might do some ribbon, right? I love this little guy. So you, you're you also making and dyeing garments and selling them out of your shop in Portland, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. And you have an online store as well? Yes, my online store is um, annajoyce.etsy.com. That's awesome. I do garments and um, even things like bedding sets and uh, blankets, robes, all sorts of stuff. I know that yeah. like um, our... our no, she's our general manager, Leanna, all day. I think oh. it was for her oh. 40th birthday, her big 40th. She got one of your yes, robes. She was she like, did. I'm totally treating myself. Yay. Oh my God, she's yeah. so cute. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. These are beautiful. Thank you so much. I've never done ice dyeing. You know, I've played with dye, I've used protein dye and stuff, but I've never done ice dyeing. Ice so dyeing's really amazing. Excited. It's especially great with the summer coming up as well. Yeah. You can do it in the winter, but obviously it'll take longer when yeah. your studio is 50 degrees than right. it does when it's 80. We'll try to simulate the results in the studio today. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this t shirt. We have about, I I'd say about three quarters of a gallon of water in this bucket. Um, the mordant that we're going to use today is soda ash. Um, soda ash is just a white powder that you use, you put it into the water and it will make sure that the dye bonds permanently to the textile. So is this 100% cotton? Yes, we're going to be doing everything today with 100% cotton. You can use mixed fibers, but um, anything that's a synthetic fiber won't hold onto the dye and it'll release it so your patterns will come out a lot lighter. Okay. So this um, soda ash you can find online or in art stores, it, you want to wear gloves when you're handling it. Okay. It's not incredibly ca caustic or anything, but it would irritate your skin the way that maybe a laundry detergent or a okay. cleaning supply might. So I am going to, add the, um, the basic formula for soda ash is one cup per one gallon of okay. water. Since we have about three quarters of a cup of, or three quarters of a gallon of water in here, I'm going to add about three quarters of a cup. And this formula is also in your book? Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, this is a basic formula for soaking items before using um, fiber reactive dye. Cool. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and stir that, make sure that it's dissolved. We're using warm water here. It helps it dissolve, but you can use cold water as well from the hose. All right. From the hose. I from love it. I'm already hose, imagining yeah, doing this in my backyard. Yes, exactly. All right, 
So this is good. I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the soda ash soak. Does that need to be like pre-washed or? It's always a good idea to pre-wash and dry all of your um, textiles before you um, dye them to make sure that any starch, oils, any um, anything that they use to Weird. coat the fiber, okay. especially things like canvas can have a lot of coating on it. So people always wanna dye tote bags. Yeah. Um, and, and they it, have like stiffeners. And... It, that's exactly right. So the, the dye, and uh, you can oftentimes see the dye just like roll off yeah. when you've got a lot of stiffeners on something like a, yeah. like a canvas. So I usually tell people in the book, the instructions say that you let this soak for 15 minutes. Um, today we can probably speed it up just a little bit. That. We're not going to do that today. We just but, want to show you the process. So make sure like if you're doing it at home, follow, exactly. follow the and steps. 15, that's, that's a, I mean, it can stay in here for 15 minutes. That's about the least you might want to do. And then you can let it sit in here as long as you want. It's not going to hurt it to soak fiber. in here. So yep. you can do it overnight, right? That, like oh yeah. Prep a bunch of buckets and then like if you're Absolutely. A party the next day. Absolutely. Die. That's right. So cool. this guy's totally saturated. There aren't any dry spots, so it should be fine to die. Okay. All right. So I'm going to wring out the um, remaining soda ash. You don't need to throw this away when you're done. You can save this until oh. it's either been completely absorbed into all the textiles. So if you did a bunch more t-shirts and it was all gone, or if it gets dye in it and it okay. gets dirty, then you'd want to get rid of it. But until That's then cool you can use it. it. Yeah, absolutely. Really cool. I have a big bucket of soda ash that I just keep adding to constantly in my studio. It's like your sourdough starter. It's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, so now I've got my shirt, and uh, one of my favorite patterns to do under the ice is just a simple scrunch. That's how both of these patterns were made. So that would be, I'm using a colander right now. You can use a cookie sheet. Um, I do like to use a colander because you don't have to spend as much, oops, sorry, spend as much time fussing with where the ice goes. Gotcha. It's not falling everywhere. Yeah. So these new colanders I've started using are really great. And the so, colander's from Ikea, guys. Yep, Very colander's easy. just like a $2 <laughs> colander from Ikea. So you can make all sorts of different patterns under the ice. I'm going to maybe take the upper shoulder and give it a little twist. Oh, okay. Kind of see what's going. And then I just like to have everything kind of even so there aren't any big spots that are bunched up. Hidden. But basically anything that you do is going to be really cool. And could you dye it more than once? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't like the way that it turns out, you'd want to rinse out all the dye and then you could just layer over the top of it. Oh, cool. So you can always do that. So you can always start out with less dye and add more. You can never take color away, but you can always add it. So gotcha. that's kind of fun. And then some of my very favorite pieces that I've ever made have been mistakes at first. Oh, yeah. And then turn out to be my favorites where yeah. you just are like, oh, I'm just going to throw it in navy blue and then something really cool happens. So experimenting is always, always good. I love that. I love projects that like you don't have to have a lot of rules to go into. No. There's a little, I mean, that's what I like respond to, right? It's like image transfers. It's like there's always something unexpected. Exactly. Like, that's probably what and keeps that's, you interested. That's exactly right. And yeah. you can use the same colors um, a million times. You'll never get the same pattern, yeah. which is great. That's, I don't like making the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So this is perfect for me. Okay. So we're just going to pour the ice on top. Um, depending on the shape of your ice, you're going to get different shapes in your final piece. So Ooh, I the feel like ice, that's a faith thing. She loves the shape of ice. Yes. She's really into that. So cool. So snow, if you live in a snowy region, you can use snow for this. Wow. You can crush up your ice. I'm actually really excited to see what kind of shapes we're going to get from this. The dye that I use, or the, the ice that I use is usually the kind of cylindrical barrel shaped ice with oh, a yeah. hole down the center. Yeah. So I'll often get these really round, beautiful shapes where you can almost see that like where the dye through. trickled through the barrel Do you have an ice, ice machine that makes that? No, I still pick up ice every day. And the people at um, at the plaid pantry never ask me what I'm doing. I buy 40 pounds of ice a day. They maybe think you're like and a they don't fisherman. know. Yeah, I know. They He's must like think I have like a lot of parties. Okay. So I've done a nice even layer of ice. Um, you can always play around with how much ice that you use, where you put it. Um, every different decision that you make on top of this t-shirt is going to result in a little bit of a different pattern, which is kind of cool. I love that. All right. So I've got my ice. Everything looks good. And now I'm going to go ahead and use some dye. So the dyes that I Show have Taren today. What these are. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm using today, I'm using um, the Jacquard Procyon dyes. So these are really pretty. I love using Jacquard products. I also use Dharma Trading dyes. I find that the Dharma Trading dyes are um, a little bit more intense in color and have a little bit more of for lack of a better word, like an opaque finish oh. on the textile. And that the Procyon dyes from Dharma Trading have a little bit of a softer, more translucent yeah, look. more watercolory. More watercolory, gotcha. exactly. Yep. So playing around with both dye. of those. Yes, these are, these are powdered dyes. These are just small, they're inexpensive. You can find them at almost every art store. Cool. 
So I and think they're for textiles and for cotton specifically? Uh, yes, these are for specifically for um, fibers. cellulose fibers. Okay. So that would be um, cotton, linen, hemp, rayon, things like that. They work okay on protein fibers, like we're going to use them like for wool. silk, silk and okay. wool, but the colors do shift just gotcha. a little bit because the fi they are fiber reactive. Gotcha. So there's actually like a chemical reaction that takes place between the fiber and the dye. Cool. Um, so the, read the label. Yes. But don't be afraid to experiment. But they, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Don't be afraid to experiment. I have found that um, protein fibers pull out the purple. Oh, so that's something you're going to maybe end up with a little bit more pinks and a little bit more purples if you're trying to go for something a little bit more I don't know. I, I just noticed that even if you're working with something that you don't think has a lot of purple in it, that the suddenly becomes that's exa yeah, very exactly. Yeah, exactly. So um, not as much with the cotton, but definitely with the uh, the protein fibers. Cool. Okay. So we're gonna layer up some color. Um, I'll dye just a little bit about how the dyes are gonna break once they get on top of the ice. All dye is made up of three colors. So it's cyan, yellow, and magenta. So mm -hmm. just printer's primaries, basically. Yeah. Um, so when the dye hits the ice, the dye will begin to kind of break apart on top of the ice. And then as it melts, you'll get all these unexpected pops of color. Oh, so crazy. the cyan, the yellow, and magenta that come together to make, for instance, this antique gold yeah certain parts of the yellow will only be yellow certain will kind of come together you'll get orange and red and pink and all these different colors so you can use that cool. to um, to get different patterns like do you remember when you're a kid or, or maybe with your girls like you drew with marker and then if it got wet yes. how it would like bloom out all these weird colors You're like yes. why does the black have like so much pink that's in it? that's exactly what's happening yeah. with the dye it's as it melts it blooms the colors and where it hits the textile you'll get these really sharp pops cool. so i think i'm going to do some antique gold and now I've got a couple of different options as I'm adding the dye. You could either sprinkle the entire thing. You can go in little um, areas. You can do striped patterns. You can kind of, dip. The, the way that you apply the dye is going to um, have a big effect on the final pattern. So for these, t uh, this t-shirt and then mm -hmm. this sweatshirt here, I'm kind of, I'm gonna do a similar technique. This is one of my favorites. So I'm gonna add a little bit of dye over here. And you're not adding very much. This is probably about a half a teaspoon. So you're like seasoning your... Yep, you're basically seasoning. You can, and if you want to, you can use little teaspoons, things like that. I'm just gonna do a little bit. And then I think it would be pretty to do a color called brown rose, which I imagine is gonna kind of break apart and have a lot of pink and purple in it. So I might have some spots that are just brown rose and then other spots where they kind of come together more a little bit with that gold. Oh, I love these colors. We have a question? Yes. Ashley says, I've seen projects where they dye things with Kool-Aid. Could you try that with this process? So Ashley's, I'm going to repeat the question just so everyone's yeah, here. Ashley's absolutely. asking, um, she said that she's seen some things dyed with Kool-Aid. Could you do ice dyeing but with Kool-Aid instead of Procyon dye? I would try it. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how... Um, I don't know how uh, color fast Kool-Aid is as mm -hmm. far as like washing and drying your t-shirt over and over again, mm -hmm. but you could definitely try it. Yeah, yeah. cool. This is about as easy to get as Kool-Aid, and yeah. I know for sure that this works and right. is permanent. Yeah. But you might as well try it. It'd probably be really fun. Yeah. You could and, try it with a ribbon, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to do a little bit of navy onto the top as well. That should well, give some... I love some... the veins of color that are happening. Yeah, just a little bit. Might as well see what's going to happen. I've never done this combination before, so it might be great. So cool. Be sure to like and share with friends if you want to potentially win a copy of Anna's new book. Okay. And died. All right. So that is ready to go. Now, you would just sit and wait for it to melt all the way through before you rinsed out your um, your piece to see what the patterns are. And that, of course, depends on like if you're in the sun or exactly. it's the heat or mm -hmm. if you're in your studio and 50 degrees, like you mentioned. So um, we can set this aside and answer some questions and show the ribbon if you want yeah, to absolutely. next. Absolutely, that sounds great. And then we could also hit it with the heat gun and see. For sure. But let's let it and sit hitting it bit. with the heat gun will probably change the pattern a little bit, which yeah, is cool as you move it up, yeah. as you make everything change and kind of add heat to the equation. It's going to be interesting it's too, like so that'll change. be fun. <laughs> climate change dying. Next question uh, is more of a comment. comes from Becca, and she's Thank you. advising to wear a mask. So, Anna, should you wear a mask when you're working with these powders at home? You absolutely um, should wear a mask when you're working with the powders at home. That's a great idea, especially if you're not outside. You don't want to have any of the dye become airborne. 
But it looks like it's sticking to the ice pretty readily. It does, yeah. So that I, helps um, the process. You're not like stirring and exact, activating it. Into that's the exactly. Air. Especially, and if you're using just little bits of a, um, if you're using a teaspoon or something like that, you can um, just apply it really delicately. And mm -hmm. I almost never have dye become airborne. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. All right, All right so, so now we'll do ribbons. a little bit of ribbon. So these, we've got three colors here. We're gonna do a little bit of silk. I think it would be fun. I was gonna maybe do a little bit of this carmine red. I'm gonna soak my silk ribbon in the soda ash. Should I cut some off for you? That'd be great, how thanks, Courtney. How much would you like? Um, a let's yards? do, yeah, a couple yards would be great. A couple um, different bits of a few yards. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this red in here. I'm not doing very much. This is just a couple of cups of water. So I'm gonna add, I'm adding about a half a teaspoon to this. It's fun to watch it yeah. dissolve in there. You can see the different Very colors pretty. that are coming out. Maybe we'll do, do, do three batches. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Got the carmine red, do a little bit more of this brown rose. That's a really pretty color. This will pull out a lot of purple. It might not look purple right now, but it'll really turn to purple. And then let's do a little mix of a lemon yellow, just mm -hmm. a tiny bit. And we'll add a little bit of antique gold in there too. Do a custom. Custom blend. Custom blend. And then exactly. how do you, uh, where do you get the silk ribbon from? Is that Dharma Trading? Yeah, I've got that silk ribbon from Dharma Trading. It is ready to dye. Um, this ribbon's cut on the bias. So it's so beautiful. It's really nice. It's a very fun project to do with kids. It's kind of like dyeing Easter eggs, but yeah. then at the holidays you could use it. This would be gorgeous for, can you imagine this at a wedding? Oh my God, so You know, hand-dyed ribbon at a wedding. It's right. not and very it's, expensive. It's expensive to purchase, like made by someone that else, but how fun would it be to it make is it for not, yourself? And also think about how fun it would be to have a party where all of your closest friend comes over and everybody dyes like 10 or 15 yards of ribbon. So and it's fun to sit and chat and have a glass of wine and do this type of work. I love it. All right, so. We've got the ribbon. At this point, you can decide um, what kind of pattern you want to make. So I'm going to make my, I'm going to fold the ribbon um, into a pattern before I put it into the soda ash. Okay. And then just one thing about soda ash and silk, which is also in the book, uh -huh. is you want to expose the silk to the soda ash for less time than you would okay. the cotton. So the protein fiber doesn't want to be in the soda ash nearly as long. Okay. So I'm just going to put it in, make sure that it's absorbed. It's gonna be Remove permanent it. and then I'm gonna take it out. It does start to kind of break down and stiffen the okay. silk. Okay. Yeah. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna do something really, really simple. I'm just gonna gather everything in. You wanna do one? I'm doing this oh, one. Oh, good, 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 good. For you, just Thank to you. be yes, ready. Yes, yes, do something. I'm gonna just kind of gather this together. Easy peasy, you kind of can't go wrong. Just here. And I'm just gonna do kind of a twist. I mean, I'm making, just I'm wadding this into kind of a funky ball and it's still gonna be pretty. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a rubber band. You might wanna use this bowl clip oh, okay, to cool. do something too, since you've folded it into a really cool kind of a, almost like a. Like that? Yeah, that'd be like beautiful. Like Yep, totally. Then maybe I'll just do one more rubber band right here. Do you, can you tie knots with this or is it hard to remove? They're hard to, they're hard to do. Yeah. yeah, you might wanna do a twist or okay, something like that. This should just have like a really pretty kind of crunched up pattern. There's really no wrong answer here. All right, I'm gonna pop this in there. This has just got a sim simple bull clip on it. If I just did that and tied it, oh, would that be, be okay? Yeah, no, it'd be beautiful. Like That'd that? be great, yep, sure, <laughs> yeah. So what's gonna happen here is you're probably gonna have quite a bit of pattern in here and not so much okay, out so at the I end. Okay, so something here That's too. That's just, no, just no judgment, no. just just the... I'll do another knot. Okay. So this one, we're going to have lots of pretty pattern in here. That should be great. Okay. okay. Put this in. Put this in. That's just going to take a second. You can usually tell that your um, textile is fully saturated when it sinks to the bottom. Okay. So no, no more air is escaping. All right. And then I think just with a little piece of this, I'm just going to text the... Uh, test the tone of our colors here oh, to see what um, if I want to add any more dye. Now I haven't soaked this in the soda ash. I'm not expecting this to be permanent. I just want to get a little sense it's for how, test. how bright that is. So and that's does it really pale. Dry lighter. Yes, it'll yeah. dry up to two shades lighter as the water evaporates. So I want to add just a little bit more red to this to make it a little deeper. I'm just going to use the end of this to um, put in the other one here to see what that looks like. And that's a nice bright yellow, I like that. Now with the red. Oh my God, I can see like the little bits of blue from your gloves. That's yes, already cool. Yes, that's exactly, I was gonna show you, this is called freckling. 
So if you haven't stirred up your items or you have any dye particulates that are left on your gloves, they will become permanent. And I mean, I didn't even know I had blue on my hands. Yeah. And then here it is on the dye. I mean, I here it is it. on the ribbon. Okay, so I'm gonna stir this up. I'm gonna try to get it kind of as stirred as nicely as possible so I don't have all those freckles. Pink and reds are the most difficult to... Um, most freckly. <laughs> Redheads are the yeah. most freckly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna stir that. This guy's ready. Do you have a preference for what color? Oh, no. Okay. Just wanted to play with it. All right, let's put yours in the brown rose. Yeah. Okay, I think that that'll be pretty. Good. You can see I'm being a little bit... You're mixing with laissez faire. You don't care. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just... These are two different... These tones are both pink. I think it's going to be okay. We're just doing ribbon. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty. It's like a yeah, dusty rose. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we'll leave that in there. And then we've got these other two here. I think I'll put my kind of crinkle one in the red. And then I'm going to add just a tiny bit more of the antique gold so we can see just a little bit more pattern in this yellow here. Yes, yeah, so the lighter colors light. are going to have a subtler pattern to have contrast. Mm -hmm, exactly. All right. Yeah, this, this is, is like Easter egg dyeing, but yeah. I like ribbon better than I like eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you don't end up with gray, uh, gray egg salad the yeah. next day and that, when you dye ribbon. Yeah. And I'll have to wait for a season for nope. it. Nope. Okay, I'm going to pop that in. All right. Oh, yeah. Let nice. that guy it's like sit a in there. Yellow. Yes, really pretty. So um, it just kind of depends on how bright you'd like everything. I usually would say you'd let these guys soak in there for at least 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, the less time they're in there, the lighter they'll be. Okay. The longer they're in there, the darker and more saturated the colors will be. So just, just like Easter eggs. And do you have to um, stir them often? Like if you're going to let them sit for half hour, would you stir them like 10 minutes in? Or? Yeah, I think keeping them moving. They don't need to be moved all the time, but keeping them kind of um, a little bit active. Is, is not a bad idea so you don't get any flat spots or yeah. spots where there aren't any dye. So cool. Okay. Should we try heating that up? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what happens. You guys can ask questions. But there's going to be some heat gun noise. Okay. And then the heat gun is here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Whoa. Oh, this is, God, I need one of these. You need a giant industrial one, like I a shrink wrapper <laughs> that you get from Home Depot. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, not a bad yeah. idea. I just use the sun or I time. mean, that's nice. But. <laughs> I usually start my ice dye first thing in the morning when I get into the studio. I soak everything um, right when I get in and then let it, let it die. And then oftentimes in the afternoon, things are ready to go into the wash. Mm. Or my studio, my new studio faces south, so I've been putting some stuff outside as well and nice. letting it go. Yeah. So after, in the washing part, mm -hmm. um, do you have to do anything before you throw it in the washer? Can you throw multiple things together in the washer? Do you wash it on hot or cold? That's a really good question. You're going to wash stuff on cold, um, and then everything should be rinsed really well with cold water before you um, put it into the washing machine. So that stops the dyeing process. It mm -hmm. arrests all of the chemical reactions that are taking place in the textile. And then it kind of makes everything less muddy. If you've seen um, uh, tie-dye come out really muddy, maybe yeah. the, the colors have bled together, you're not seeing the separation between the yellow and the pink and the blue and all the different colors. That may have been because it wasn't rinsed. Gotcha. So um, in my studio, I rinse everything really well until the water's almost running completely clear. Um, but I try to, I try to waste as little water as possible. One of the things I really like about working with the um, fiber reactive dye is you don't use a lot of water, mm. which is really cool. So um, yeah, so you're rinsing things really well and then you can wash them on hot uh, to get out the rest of the dye. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I can see that all the dye has melted off, but the ice is still there. This thing's cool. Yeah, and you can hear it, it's like tinkling. Yeah, you can hear it, yeah, exactly. Are there any questions you guys can ask us now while we're watching yeah, the ice? A, a new question from Phil. Phil wants to know, how quickly does the rate of ice melt affect the pattern or break? So if the ice melts quickly a day versus if it melts slower because so Phil's one of our regular live oh, shooters. Cool. Um, question, question folks and great creative bugs quarter. Hi, Phil. And he's in the UK, so I'm guessing it's oh, still cool. cold there. 
Um, and he's asking the rate at which the ice melts, does that affect the pattern? Like if it's faster or slower, does that make it more intense or more vibrant or more contrast? Is there like a rhyme or reason to that? Um, there is. What I've noticed, I have definitely noticed that I haven't, I've never used a heat gun, but I have poured boiling water oh. over the top of the ice and that will dull the colors a little bit and it will also make the patterns a little bit more watercolor and dreamy instead of like the really sharp, sharp kind of like edges. fractal patterns. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like interested this. to see what happens with the, um, with this heat gun. And is it there, like, would we remove the ice to look at what's happening under there? You can. Every time you kind of touch the ice, you're going to play with the pattern. Yeah. So, I mean, we can definitely look. I can see right here that it's melting, Ooh. and we've got this really pretty bits of orange and yellow mixed in with that navy blue. Okay, so I'm, I'm excited get, to see what's see going on. It's really cool. I'm kind of right in here. Ooh, that was hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised. It's hot. <laughs> Yeah, and um, people will probably want to know, can you use a hair dryer instead? Sure. And that would take you forever, though, compared to a heat Yeah, gun. it probably would. I think that I think that really the best thing to do is to leave it out in the sun, yeah. kind of forget about it and walk away, and in about 45 minutes you have something. It's also, um, especially if you're working in the sun, you're not going to want to do just one piece because it's so fun yeah. that you could set up a bunch of them and kind of keep going, Yeah. which is fun, yeah. such an interesting process because it's so passive. And I know. It's cool. And the ice just makes you look good. It makes all these incredible patterns for you, which is really fun. And you can also really play around with any of the patterns in the pattern library from hand dyed mm -hmm. under the ice oh. to get different. So if you wanted to do a shibori pattern, you could do, you could even wrap things with rubber bands. You mm -hmm. could do things. I love doing things in a spiral. Um, this is kind of similar to the pattern that we're doing today, but I do love doing twists like this, and I also really, really like to ice dye over the top of spirals as That's well. That's cool. Yeah. A lot of the pieces in my shop are done with ice dye. Yeah, what kind of stuff um, in your shop do you, you said you do bed sheets, mm -hmm. robes? I think my best sellers are the bedding and the robes and then the sweatshirts. Um, this is a baby version of one of the sweatshirts, um, and then this is a t-shirt. But wow. yeah, I do a lot of ice dyeing on it's bedding. So it's really, cute. really fun. So, cute, so right? cool. <laughs> yeah. Little hippie baby. I love it. Yeah, I mean, do you get that comment that it feels like tie-dye and like how you know, is it more You know what's really cool is that I, the comment that I get a lot is um, that people tell me it looks like flowers. Oh, I love that. Which is really exciting because um, nature and especially flowers are, base, are my inspiration as far as the way that Mother Nature is able to really pair together these really wild color combinations and make them look so totally effortless. So that's just one of my biggest inspirations. And so to have people tell me like, oh gosh, this reminds me of a dahlia or looks like a, when you said galaxy. So this, yeah. this pattern's called galaxy. Yeah. So it's always so exciting when somebody just, you know, I had a woman be like, oh, this reminds me of a sunrise. I'm like, that, that's, that, that robe's called sunrise. Like, yeah. you know, and so that's, that's really fun. So um, I think I most get people kind of saying that it doesn't look like traditional tie-dye and that yeah. they're responding I'm to sure. that. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's fun. Um, and it's just, it's I find dye to be a really great way to, for me to express myself artistically because I think first and foremost, I'm kind of a colorist. So it's mm -hmm. really nice to be able to work with color. Yeah, I feel like one of the things that you see with tie-dye is like, they use all the colors of the rainbow. Yes, that can happen. Um, and there's a lot of white present. Right, yeah. And I feel like for you, you're using these like really harmonious color palettes. Like you might be using some warms and some cools together, but where they blend, you get like these really lovely, rich earth tones yeah. as opposed to like muddy brown, like you mentioned. Exactly. And that's just that rinsing and kind of getting everything out. And there are a lot of different ways that you can play around with getting more white or less white. If you wanted more white in your final pattern, you'd scrunch it more tightly and add less dye, mm -hmm. more overall pattern, a lot more dye, a much looser pattern underneath. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting really close, Courtney. I just wanna like get in there, just like in my hands. Okay guys, it's gonna be like. So cool. Now we're gonna. I think it's probably a good time to stir the... Oh, I can stir. Oh, great. Thank you. Some multitasking your projects here. Ooh, that <laughs> color is really pretty. Let's see, how's it look? Now, if any of the colors look like they're dark enough or they're ready to come out, you can always do that. It's pretty. It's like a goldenrod, yeah. amber tone. That's really pretty. It's really nice. Let's check on my 
What was this called? Something rose? That's Thank called um, brown rose. I love it. Yeah. Ooh, it's, it is more purpley than it yeah. looked when we started. Yep. It'll pull out that pink and that purple. And even when this comes out, it's more lavender. It'll be kind of a lavender. Yep. Yeah. And you can dark. also layer colors as well. So like Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And if I, we were, like, let's say we were going to dip this in one of these other colors mm -hmm. or vice versa, do we squeeze it out, rinse it out, or just put it back in? That's or? what we'd want to do. Yeah, take it, squeeze it out, rinse it out, and um, you could even un unwrap it, rewrap re it, get so different patterns. On. Yes, you'd want to wear gloves. Okay. Yeah. Wow, this is so cool. So should we leave these in? I think I think they're probably going to be ready to come out pretty soon. Should I just put them in a bowl? Yeah, that's good. Or we can put them we can put them on a paper, paper towel, towel and wring them okay. out. Mm -hmm. So most of the time oh. when you're working with fiber reactive dye, you want to allow your pieces to sit for about 12 to 24 hours wrapped in plastic. Okay, so like if I take this out, then you'd wrap it in plastic for that's 12? What, that's what you would do. You would wring it out, wrap it in plastic for about, for about 12 hours if it's warm. Oh. And that's called curing. Okay. It allows the chemical reaction to take place on a deeper level in the fiber and you get more of a, um, a vibrant end result where, cool. where the patterns are like really crystal and you can really see them mm. and they're very... Um, more sharp. More sharp, exactly. Yeah. So we're not going to do that today because we don't have 12 hours, right. but that is... And when, you, when and if you get the book, yeah. you would know that um, all of the fiber reactive dye projects, you're told to, to, um, to let them rest, yes. Now, if you don't want to, you don't have to, because if you're impatient, if you're impatient and you want to break the rules, like I did when I first started dying, and I didn't do any of that, and I just washed everything out right away, yeah, um, it's still totally fine. Yeah, you're just going to get a different result. Your colors are going to be a little bit less sharp. Your patterns are going to be a little bit less sharp. Your colors won't be as they'll be more muted. Yeah, it's just different. Vibe. Just different. That's right. If you hand me a glove, I'll ring these guys out. Yeah, absolutely. Like, just go. So I'm excited to see what this is. This is so fun. All right, so I'm just like squeezing this into. Perfect. Just so there's not a lot of extra dye as you're unwrapping it. Actually, I'm gonna go for this other one yes, too. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Okay, be honest, how often are your fingertips still dyed with always, stuff? Yeah. Always, always okay. dyed with stuff, every, every day, all the time. The tops of my feet, my forearms, my, um, my gloves come up to about mid-forearm, mm -hmm. so I always have bands of dark. Like above them? Yes, and I'm, I work with a lot of purples and a lot of blues mm -hmm. and a lot of yellows, so it looks like my arms are like bruised, bruised all the time. Yeah, I get weird looks in my exercise class. You're like, ugh, what's happening to you on the weekend? You're like I'm wrestling dye <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm getting ice. <laughs> yeah. I actually really love this lavender color. Oh, good. It's so pretty. Um, yeah, I, I like do, that color I am too. contaminating it because my gloves okay. have color on them. That'll me. be all right. You'll get the idea. So should I undo them? Yeah, or? absolutely. You Ooh. can undo them and just kind of see how they start to look. Okay. Now everything will, um, all of the colors will pop as soon as you iron them, you know? Oh. So they've got- oh, look. Mm -hmm. my clamp left like a little spot. Yeah, adorable. And then that spot. Oh, it like multiplies. Yeah. So I could also, like you said, I could, okay, so if I wanted to rinse it and re-dye it, like to try, like fold it in a different way, yep. um, would I do the wrapping for 12 hours or would I just like, Rinse it, re. If you wanted it. to put it back in, you know, one of the things I might do now, you could rinse it. You could also just wrap it up and put it into another color. Yeah. If you rinse it, you'd have to re soak it in the soda ash to make okay. sure that that second color bonds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Okay, let's see what this. I love this color, this antique gold. Yeah. So pretty. And once the colors dry and you kind of hit them with the iron, it will make, once everything's like really flat, you'll be able to see those patterns really clearly. Yeah, it gets more yeah, contrast exactly. in there because everything's wet right now. But yeah, you can see some of the the subtle white yes. in here, which is yeah, really nice. Yeah, the colors on that yellow are going to be really subtle and so pretty though. Really pretty. 
Oh my God, do you want to keep all the paper towels in your studio? Yes, I use it for wrapping orders. Oh, and at Christmas, I, I usually um, use... Um, like newsprint underneath newsprint. everything? That's, yes, exactly. Yeah. I use newsprint and then it makes the most gorgeous patterns and it makes the prettiest wrapping paper with this yeah. ribbon. I love it. Yeah. So because we rushed it a little bit here as far as like letting it soak and everything, the patterns aren't maybe as clear, but... That's really cool though. Yeah. I mean, this is just like our first pass. Yep. Look how vibrant that red is. Yeah, I the didn't, red's really I didn't think it was even going to be that vibrant. Yeah, that's fun. Okay, and this shirt's almost ready, too. Ooh, I love it. So, yeah, you can even see. Yeah. All in there. Really pretty. Yeah. Oh, my God. This immediately makes me want to re-scrunch it and stick it in indigo. So, like, I would have red. Oh, yeah, right absolutely. Under there. That would be beautiful. I just basically want to do that with everything. I mean, also, when I in doubt, throw it towels. in an indigo bath is yeah. like a good motto. All right, we can probably just open this up and shake yeah. off these little bits of ice. Okay. Let's look at it. All right. Okay, oh God, so, so through here, all of this water has um, poured. Wow. We've got dye kind of water underneath. And then... Wow. It's not at all like what I was anticipating. It's like a real galaxy. Yeah. That's so, amazing. We've got that. And if we want, we could, should I just wring it out? Yeah. Okay, let's do, do that. Do and then maybe I do. can even just rinse it in the soda ash and that water just because it. it's right there. It shouldn't hurt it. Yeah. It'll make the soda ash unusable again, but yeah. it's like nice cold water to kind of rinse it out and see what's happening. So maybe we can kind of get some sense of what's going on in I here. I love it. It's almost like starry camo. Yes. Really cool. I may have made that kind of muddy by doing that, but ideally you'd want it under running water. Running water, so you're constantly rinsing away yeah, extra dye. Exactly. And not reintroducing it. Yeah. It's still really pretty though. You can put it straight on the table. Okay, okay. great. Wow, that's really cool. I love these ochre tones. So yes. that's the gold. Yep, that's the gold. And you can see that it's got like all of this. It's like sediment. Or yep. So these, this like movement that you see is from the ice dying. Exactly. Or and then, or uh, melting rather. The, the, from the ice melting. And then all of these different patterns are, are from where the t shirt was kind of crunched oh, up cool. under the ice. Okay, let's like this. It's way too soon. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. So there's that t shirt. Beautiful. I know, I'm going to have to do this color in my studio. I, I love it. Really it's like a Van like Gogh painting. Yeah, That's I know. Like it reminds I'm, me of. I'm so inspired. I saw that the de Young has that Monet exhibit. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I'm always so inspired by those paintings and the way that the, everything the comes to. Yes, yeah. so beautiful. So, yes, that kind of have these, like, gorgeous brush strokes patterns. Yeah, yeah. this is the movement. It did get really dark when I put so it in there, didn't it? Interesting. Hmm? Yeah, but it's there really cool. Yeah, a little bit more it. of a muted, kind of a the more of a modern masculine. way to wear. Yeah, masculine. a little bit more of a modern way to wear tie dye. I love it. Thank Beautiful. You. Thank oh, you good. So much. Yeah, so of course. People were following along at home. Let's say. Yeah, um, absolutely. The next step here: rinse under cold water till yep. water runs clear. That's right. Wrap in Saran wrap for twelve hours. Actually, for the ice dye, you don't need to do the um, the wrapping in the Saran oh, okay. wrap because the dye's already done everything. So you just can mm. rinse it out. And um, also, a lot of the time, if you're letting the ice melt it already takes about 12 hours oh, so gotcha. since we did such a fast version yeah. that that happens in real life it happens a little bit more slowly so the curing happens while it's actually working exactly yeah exactly okay. so you would rinse this out with cold water until the water runs clear and then throw it into the washing machine cold. and then after um, with cold or hot yeah, that's fine um and then um after you're done uh washing it it's just wash and wear from then on out Amazing. yeah it's great oh my god beautiful and i love that like you know, you've got the inside. Yes, and, and, all the and then the pattern will be a little bit different on the back as well. Yeah, it's so, so cool. Yeah, really nice. How fun. Cool. I love, like, I mean, ice is your main medium for that. Like, it's so amazing. For a lot of it, yeah, I use it a lot. I love it. So cool. It's really been nice, and I've been um, playing around with harnessing different shapes of ice, different patterns, using gravity, and yeah. it's been really fun. Oh, my God, rad. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much for showing us Thank like you so me. much for having me. And this so the book so is fun. full of ice dyeing, but yep. also other reactive dyeing processes. Exactly. Yes, um, working really big, working really small, gives you all the different yeah. formulas. Um, and then also one of the things that I use is I give you um, exact colors 
colors to purchase. Oh, cool. Which uh, was one of the frustrations that I had when I was learning to dye. Not all yellows are going to look the same right. or pinks or anything. So I give you exact color combinations. Yeah, because you've been, how long have you been doing this? You've been doing this a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's so awesome. So make sure that you um, like and follow Anna Joyce on Facebook as well as Creative Bug. Um, post in the comments or tag a friend because we will close out the giveaway at the end of this week and you can win a copy of Anna's new book, Hand Dyed. Um, and then anything else you want to sign off with? Like they can find you on Instagram. Is they that can find under? me. Yep, it's at Anna Joyce Design on Instagram. Um, my Etsy shop is uh, AnnaJoyce.etsy.com and awesome. get a copy of the book. Yeah, and you can watch our other classes on Creative Bug. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for so having me. Thank fun. you. It's such a treat to have you in the studio. And we'll see you guys on our next live shoot.